The Orlando Dreamers have been put into existence. Jacoby Ellsbury and the Yankees are in a fight. The Braves and the White Sox are signing guys. Let's talk baseball. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Baseball. My name is John Boy. I'm coming to you from the Bay Area. I have a computer. I have a printer calibrating right by me. I wonder if that's loud. And J- sounds loud. And Jake is coming to you from, dude, where are you actually? South Carolina? South Carolina. You're all over it. South Carolina. Uh, yeah, right right over the border from Charlotte um, in North Carolina, Tega K, if yeah. you remember. Yes, it has an interesting name, Tega K. Interesting name. There's a lot of different ways to say it. I'm probably still saying it wrong. Uh, little A-Rod baseball in the intro. That, that put a little lead in my pencil. Baseball. How else would you say Tega K? Tega K? Tega K, Tega Key. Um, Tega, uh, yeah, I don't even know anymore. It looks beautiful. I'm looking at Google Images of Tega K. It looks blue waters, green trees. There looks Dude, like there's th- a really nice lake. Um, do I remember the name of the lake? No. Um, Tega? I'll... I'll I'll send you a picture of what I'm looking at right now, and that'll that'll come over in a minute or two. There's a water. There's nice little houses. So you're living living large in Tega K. Living large in a barge. Oh, I found uh, one Google image here. The water looks green and gross. They should scrap that one from the record books. I'll talk to Google about that. Yes. Um, where are you? Pleasanton, Dublin? Pleasanton, California, the uh, East Bay. Yep. So Jake and I have been on a little wild trip. If you've been following along on social media, we went down to L.A. Now we are in our separate places, uh, heading towards our girlfriend's family's houses. Well, I'm here, and you're there. We went to our girlfriend's family's houses for Thanksgiving. So there's no video of this if you usually watch on YouTube, and I apologize about that. We still haven't perfected our traveling road set up because Google Hangouts deleted themselves from existence and they were the easiest way to do it. And uh, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's very frustrating. Here we are. I know we kind of missed a day. We're late. A lot of things are going on in baseball. And we were hanging out with a lot of cool people. We met, who do we meet? Lino DeShields, Ramon Laureano, Dallas Braden was there, Chris Rose. Uh, we hung out with Trevor Ploof, and we'll be hearing from him in a coming episode. So it was a cool weekend for us. Yeah, we uh, we went to an Easton event. Uh, follow Easton on social media and comment stuff like, "Whoa, John Boy and Jake, there! You guys signed them to that to that big sponsorship deal. That's awesome. We would we would love we love that you did that. Give them all the money." Mm-hmm. That's a good Just comment. put that on their Instagram posts. <laughs> wow, Easton, looks like you had John Boy and Jake at your event. Cool. Pay them to do well, it. Pay, pay them the monies. Finally sponsoring some, some real athletes. Yeah, um, in your face. But, yeah, it was a cool event. If you haven't seen, check out our social medias or, or whatever. But they, they set up. Um, Dallas Braden was actually all over this, which confirmed he's a gamer, but there was an old NCAA baseball game that used to have a hitting mode where you hit targets and you get points. And they basically set that up at Easton. And so we did that in real life and we did a couple other events. It was a good time. I single-handedly won money for a charity. $5,000. What else did you also single-handedly do? I gave I because of that I gave less money to the other charity. You 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 the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. It was a relay race and the last event it was me versus coach ball game, putting together yeah. a puzzle and then running to the end and I won, and which means my team charity won, and it all came down to me. So that's on my resume resume now. Chris Rose pretty good on his toes, huh? Chris Rose, yeah, good guy. Chris Rose good on his toes. Toes on the nose. It's your favorite surf brand company. And everyone buy a I Love Baseball shirt for Black Friday. And that's it. And that's it. That's the show today. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Right. No, let's talk baseball, man. Good having the mic. Good having the rock in my hand again, man. Let's do a fun segment on the Orlando Dreamers, and then we'll cut it to a break and do some real storylines because we're a little behind. This is we're behind this on is this. The, this is the perfect storm for you. Like this is this is everything. This is a poor effort. This is a lonely old man. <laughs> this is this is a city that's made a clear mistake, and you. You have full permission to take out the fingernails here because it's so ridiculous. So if you aren't aware, (laughs) Orlando put together a group. A former NBA executive made his pitch Wednesday to bring a Major League Baseball team to Orlando. Uh, Pat Williams, who co-founded the Orlando Magic, said Orlando was more deserving of an expansion team than about half a dozen cities who have made proposals. So I didn't know that the MLB was this serious about expanding in general. So I'm like, okay, let's see this. Pr- <laughs> let's, let's see this proposal. And if you haven't seen the video, it's much. It's must watch. It's basically an SNL skit, but in real life, there's this old man. He's wearing. <laughs> he's he's standing next to an easel that has the logo on it, but is tarped over so he can reveal the logo. This is my favorite part of it. But he's wearing the logo on his shirt. <laughs> wearing a shirt with the logo, but getting ready for a big reveal. Every this If this was an SNL skit, you'd walk away and be like, ah, that was funny, but a little ridiculous. So he reveals the logo, which is the same exact thing on his shirt. And it's, it's, it's clip art. It's honestly, yeah. it's just two bats, a ball, some stars. And the name he's going with, or they're going with, is the Dreamers. Which, by and large, means you haven't attained the dream yet. Right. It means you haven't done it. So, like, if the team was called the Orlando Dream, because, you know, you've you've made your dream of playing pro ball or whatever. Like, right. it's a dream to play for us. Dreamers... It's like your head in the clouds. Like, yeah, you keep the hopes alive, not knocking you, but you, you you haven't made it yet, which is kind of Florida baseball. It's stupid, man. It's it's borderline un, unbelievable. Um, I I think the Astros paid Orlando to try to make a distraction um, from Trash Gate. Um, cause it, that's the, that's a more logical excuse than Orlando putting a pitch together for the team. Um, shout out to the Atlanta dream of the WNBA. Give, give them a little love, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess they're big. And I, I thought this was fun cause we, we've done a little bit what cities would be good for, for getting a baseball team right before this. We did, we landed on like Portland, Vegas, Nashville, Charlotte, um, a couple other sleepers out there. Orlando is a big time no, and I, I think what what they actually used as their argument was that if if they can get two percent of the tourists to come to the games, that they could have like the best attendance in baseball. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yep, makes sense. If if can any other teams say that? I mean, almost any major city could say that. Can't like, they say, like, if we can get 1% of the population of New York City to come to Yankee Stadium, oh, they'd be fucking hanging off the rafters. Or or the tourists, or, yeah, I mean, and any any incoming flights to a city. Um, if we it, can book up this place, it'd be full. You best believe yeah. it. We <laughs> sell all the seats, and people are in them. We could have a team here. <laughs> Uh, I feel bad, um, but I don't because it's very funny. Dreamers is such a bad n- bad name. The logo was incredible. You know what, though? Maybe this is the inside job for the next team. Maybe, like, Portland paid Orlando to have a terrible presentation. So now if Portland comes out with just, like, kind of, like, you know, a real, a real name and logo... People be like, all right, hell yeah, better than Orlando. So bad. Why Florida? Why Orlando? N- no. 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 And the other 
stupid news is Jacoby Ellsbury and the Yankees are fighting. If you are into like the nitty gritty of contract stuff, I don't think majority of people are. I think it's somewhat interesting. Ellsbury has been hurt forever. He went to some like, did you read the story, Jake? Do you know the actual details of this one? I saw some of the details come out and how they're saying he went to see another doctor, but I think he refuted that. Um, no, he went to see he's the, bad and hurt. He went to see the we got to do this more and talking Yanks because it's interesting. I think the Yankees are going to lose this and are in the wrong. But yeah, the, the Yankees are trying to say that he went to a different doctor for uh, an injury that occurred as a Yankee and they, that made it worse. Their treatment made it worse. Their treatment's super weird. They're, it's like this very weird doctor place. Um, and then people think the Yankees leaked that this doctor's office uses steroids to try and damage Jacoby's reputation. So that would be bad if that came out as true. Basically, yeah. Jacoby Ellsbury had insurance on his huge contract for 2017, 2018, 2019. So the Yankees just kept him on the DL and they got 70% of his contract back via insurance. There's no insurance on 2020 and 2021 buyout. So they don't want to pay him. So this is the Yankees trying to snake their way around paying him his guaranteed money. What Cheap like. Yankees not wanting to pay an injured bad player. Um, hey, that's good news for 29 MLB teams. Jacoby Ellsbury added to the free agent pool. He says he wants to play. S- pick, Bring him to camp. Pick him up. Tulo put on a show this year. Ellsbury can do that for another team. Yeah, then he could get a double and then retire. It's all good. Team Jacoby. All right, we have some actual signings and stuff. Let's take just a a quick smidge of a break, and we'll be back. Jake, we had some signings, some movement. Actually, you know what? Are we happy? There's been some movement. There's been action. Yeah, it's not bad. um, But it's going to be funny once we dive in because I... I was starting to get ready with a speech like, hey, there's been some good movement. Guys are getting paid. This is a good sign for baseball. And then I realized it's two teams. It's only two teams, and they're the ones that are overpaying guys. <laughs> so I don't know if that – and I let me take a step back from overpaying because we'll discuss the contracts a little bit more. Um, but we, we, we've been kind of going off the estimates on fan graphs. They did kind of a, a crowdsource round robin of what, what contracts they thought guys were going to get. And basically, they've been low on everything, um, which, again, you're like, hey, that's good for baseball. Guys are getting paid. Let's see what the big guys get. And then I was like, hold up, though, because it is just the White Sox and the Braves. Yeah. Well, and the uh, Yamahiro Giants. Yeah, Baby Shark going overseas. Gerardo, Gerardo Para is going to Japan. Now, do you think they're going to love Baby Shark over there, or do you think that it's so old? I think it might be like five years old. Um, We'll see. I mean, if he, I, I think this is going to be a classic case. If, if he plays well, I think it'll be electric. Like, I could see Baby Shark fever re-sweeping the nation over there. Um, Maybe they get an actual Baby Shark hanging out in the dugout or something. Um, and knowing Para, he's, he's an electric factory. I, I think it's going to be a hit. All right. Good for you, Para. Have fun in Japan. Enjoy. So like Jake said, the Braves continue to sign people and the White Sox continue to sign people. The White Sox made the biggest splash with Yasmani Grandal going. I think that's the highest free agent we've had signed thus far uh, on the leaderboard. And he gets paid pretty well. Four years, $73 million, the biggest contract that the White Sox have ever given out in their history. Yeah. 1825 AAV. That's everyone's favorite term come free agency time. Um, yeah, man. The, uh, the, the yes man. Yes. Monty Grandal, you and I, the, he, he was the guy that we couldn't peg. Um, I, you know, I kind of, I, in our free agency fun episode, I tried to talk myself into LAA. 
Um, he goes to the White Sox, which was a surprise because James McCann actually had a pretty solid year from the catcher position for them. Um, but this allows them to do a lot of things, and they can put Yasmani Grandal uh, around the middle of their lineup, switch hitting. Um, you can pencil him in behind the plate most days, and if um, you know if they if they need to slide him over to first a little bit, I think there will be a little bit of a transition plan. He's 31 now. Um, you know, those, those catcher knees give out at some point, but, uh, yeah, I mean, good for the White Sox. And, and when you put, when you put all, uh, again, the salary might be a little high fan graphs estimated him getting a, a three year, uh, 48 mil, he gets four for 73. Uh, so good for, good for the yes, man. Um, and if you're the White Sox, you're excited and you're, uh, this, this is a team that's going to have. Uh, like they're going to be every, everybody's sleeper this year. They're going to say, Hey, you know, the twins and Indians have to look out for this year. It's those Chicago white Sox. I'm rooting for the white Sox. Someone asked me on the AMA, like what team am I rooting for to be good? I, I want the white Sox to compete in the central. Give everyone a run for their money. What's the move here with McCann? They signed McCann last year. I, I know that like on the depth chart, he's slotted in as the DH right now. I believe he's got one more year in his contract. Uh, he's making 4.9 mil in 2020. What's the move here, Jake? I mean, he had a breakout year, and it's a clear outlier, and he's he's a guy who's older. It's not like he's a prospect that kind of broke out. So I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think they still want to use him behind the dish some days, and they can... They can maybe start moving Yasmani to first or Abreu at first and have Yasmani DH. Uh, that you and I definitely raised our eyebrow at that because they they've got a couple young outfielders that are due to come up this year, so they could have a really fun deep lineup. Um, but when you look at someone like James McCann in the DH position, no offense to James McCann, but if he comes back to the 600 OPS guy he's been his whole career before this year, that doesn't seem like a good DH. Yeah, and I was thinking, well, maybe they try to flip him if someone thinks that he can be their starting catcher, you know? But the catching, there's yeah. so many catchers out there. It's not, yeah, and, uh, it's the, not a position. Right, right, write that down for note when we start talking about the Braves in a minute. Because, um, yeah, and the, the other name, there was an Omar Narvae, Narvaez tweet um, from Seattle. He had a really good hitting year. So there's kind of this dearth of catchers is dearth a word am i using it right girth dearth uh dearth i'm not familiar with how are you spelling the real word how are you spelling it d-e-a-r-t-h no so i'm using it the wrong way i'm using it the opposite way dearth is a scarcity or lack of something so it's the opposite it's an anti-dearth like jake has a dearth of brains yeah. Oh, how could you be so dearthless in the brain, Jake? Dearthless. That's cool. That should be your band. Yeah, not a word. The dearthless wonder. <laughs> Dirt. Dearth is upon us. Dearth needs to be used word. It's, yeah, I it's think we, death with an R in there. People got to start using dearth more. I think we got to really bump up the dearth usage. I just found out it's a word. Bump up the dearth, baby. I had been dearthing um, dearth. We're happy for Yasmani. He bet on himself. Yeah, I have fun. I mean, I, I think the White Sox are, I've said this a lot, so I feel like I'm repeating myself. They're, they're, this is a pressure year. They had one last season, 2019, no pressure for the White Sox. They were having fun. They were having a blast. They were a loose clubhouse. They got into some tiffs with the Royals. There was no pressure for them to win that division. With Grandal coming, and I think we may get another move, and with everyone just kind of leveling up, and with Giolita becoming the real deal, and who was the other pitcher that started doing well for them? Like, this is becoming a pressure year for the White Sox where they're not just going to be able to have fun and it is what it is. Like, they got to win. Yeah, I, I think they still need a little more pitching-wise. I, I think they're going to be exciting, and we'll we'll see what kind of start they get off to. Um, 
you, you know, they, they've got Giolito, Kopech, the, the big prospect. He should be back for that season. Dylan Cease was a big prospect, but he got knocked around a little bit. Your guy, Reynaldo Lopez, um, the, he was, he was either do or die most games. So you'd, you'd like to see them have one more reliable, maybe veteran starter. And those guys are in the free agency pool. Um, but this is kind of good for the white Sox. I, I think, uh, it's good to learn from life's lessons. And last year they told themselves they were big fish hunting and they struck out big time. And this year, I, I think if they went big fish hunting again, you know, I, I, I think they would have struck out again. So they're, they're still getting some quality guys. They're the second tier guys on the market in um, Abreu and uh, Yasmani. So, uh, and Abreu stays in town. We like any time a local guy stays in town. Yeah, so Abreu's, and before we started talking about it, he gets three years, what did he get? Where is it? He gets three years, 50 million, which is 16. Was he getting other offers close to this, Jake? I mean, I think he was um, because he he could still play a little bit of first base and he led the league in ribbies last year. I I mean, I'm not trying to knock him. It's just no one's looking for him. J.D. Martinez opted into his contract because he knew that no one was looking for a D.H. slash first base guy. And that's uh, it's a little bit of the unknown, and it's kind of again what we'll talk about with the Braves and the White Sox is, you know who who were they bidding against? You you and I are pretty deep in this now, and I mean you know I'm sure there were teams that wanted Yasmani Grandal, but again, like you were saying, he signed pretty early. <laughs> it it seems like he he almost got more of an offer than he expected, and he signed. Um, so I I think that's kind of an overlying question for the White Sox and the Braves is. Who have they been bidding against? Because they're the o- maybe have they been bidding against each other? Because they're the only two teams making moves right now. Yeah. Did you see what the White Sox did to Yalmer Sanchez? Yeah, they just waved him. Right. He just won the Gold Glove at second base, but he was set to make six million dollars through arbitration. And they were straight up said, "Nah, we're not. We're we're not going to pay you that." <clears throat> what a shitty system. Tough. Uh, 638 OPS for Yalmer. Um, man, the get, yeah, get, get excited for the White Sox to be a fun team, man. Yes. Mani, Abreu, Tim Anderson, Moncada, Eloy Jimenez. Um, and, and they've got a couple other young guys in the pipeline too. So that's exciting. Be excited and competing with them in the free agent splash competition are Jakey's Atlanta Braves. My Braves, man, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I'm happy for them. I'm happy they're getting the guys they want. I think, um, but I I don't know. I think I've got a good question for you after this. But uh, so they signed Tyler Flowers to come back at the beginning of free agency, and it's like, okay, yeah, Flowers, they like him, sure. Um, they go out, they sign Darno to some real money, uh. And, you know, as as Yankee fans, we got to see the best of Travis Darno this year. He had a three home run against game against us this year. Um, but, yeah, he gets uh, two for 14. Um, Wait, he got two years for 14 million dollars. Excuse me. Two for 16. He's getting eight <clears throat> mil a year. That's good. I, I, and that's, it, when you said I, it's tw- great for him. He was a guy that got straight released from two teams this year. <laughs> That's true. Um, and and I guess I'll I'll just get to my Atlanta thing now. So if you're keeping track at home, Atlanta has now technically signed in free agency uh Darren O'Day, who they brought back, uh Nick Markakis, who they brought back, Tyler Flowers, who they brought back, Chris Martin, who they brought back, uh Travis Darno is a newcomer, and Will Smith, the relief pitcher from the Giants. So and we talked about this, and there is an actual dearth of relief pitching on the market. Look at that. All over that word now. Um, so we were kind of excited for them that they got Will Smith because he's pretty reliable. I mean, he's not a uh, not super lights-out intimidator of the game, but he's, he's as solid as they come. But, Jim, I mean, the Braves have now spent a pretty penny. Will Smith's getting 13 mil per year. Darno eight. Chris Martin, seven. 
uh, Flowers four, Marquecas four, and Darren O'Day uh, essentially three. So, I mean, this isn't a math podcast, but we've got, what, over 35 mil in contracts going out? And not saying this in a in a rude way, but to who, really? <laughs> well, the, the relief pitching is good. I like that money. There was a dearth of relief pitchers, as you said. So scoop up <clears throat> um, Smith. I don't, I don't mind that. But, yeah, yeah, man, like, how much is Flowers and Darno making combined? So Flowers is making four mil, and Darno is making eight mil. So right now we've got twelve mil in free agents uh, from the catcher position. And like, <clears throat> you don't think you could have went out and fa- and just like, I don't know, signed Torinos for that, and then it's another roster spot open. I mean that's uh, I guess I guess that's exactly what I'm saying. If you you've got Marquecas for four mil, uh, Flowers and Darno for twelve. I mean we're up to sixteen mil. I mean you're in Yasmani Grandal range. <laughs> um, and like if Yasmani Grandal signed with the Braves, I think you and me would be sitting here like, let's go Braves. Good move. <clears throat> that's interesting, man. They still need a third baseman. Are they going to roll with Camargo? Like you know what I mean? They're still. Are they gonna roll with Riley as a third baseman? Young, thick Austin Riley. Like, I don't know their plans there. Um, they got Culberson still around, but like, they don't have a guy at third base. Yeah, I, th- I think they want to try young, thick Austin Riley. <clears throat> um, but no, I mean, reportedly they're still in on like Mad Bum, and they want a starting pitcher. So it's, uh, I don't know. I just I get worried um, for my Braves because I'm such a huge Braves fan is that, you know, let's say the Braves do sign Mad Bum, and let's say he's good, but he's clearly not the Madison Bumgarner of old. He's got, Madison Bumgarner has thrown a thousand more innings than Zach Wheeler. <laughs> um, I, I saw that today and was like, holy smokes. But, I, I mean, what, it, if you end up spending Atlanta, I mean, 60 mil this season on free agents, and you're looking at, you know, Mad Bum as a third starter, um, a couple middle e- middle inning relievers, and then a catching platoon and Nick Markakis. I I don't know. I I think, <laughs> hey, give me two guys and we'll fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> what if Bumgarner and Darnell hate each other? I mean, there's a chance Madison Bumgarner could come in and hate half the team. Likely. Actually, I don't know. Maybe date another Madison Bumgarner. Madison um, Bumgarner went to South Caldwell High School in Hudson, North Carolina. You know how many other <clears throat> professional players have come out of South Hudson? One. Jimmy Messer got drafted, but didn't sign. Never played. No. Wow. You know how many Messer professional players have come out of Travis Darno's high school? Lakewood High School? Five, probably. Fifteen. Damn. Yeah. Jim Strickland, John Flaherty, Craig Greback, Matt Duffy, J.P. Crawford was his teammate. So I think Matt Duffy got cut, too, in, in other news. but Matt Duffy got cut. <clears throat> we had some more I don't bad know. Is news. There- is there another side to this argument we should be making to the Braves that like they already have star talent, so just filling up the rest of the team with these kind of guys? I mean, maybe that is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, so like let's look at their team from last year. They replaced McCann with Darno. Darno slash Flowers. Flowers yeah. is back. Flowers yeah. was there, so it's like you know, yeah. um, they lost Donaldson, and they added Smith. I still think they're worse. <laughs> <laughs> than last year is that mean well uh, I, n- no tell me where no, they got I, better i mean <clears throat> will smith doesn't put you better than what donaldson gave you <clears throat> yeah i i mean will smith w- w- we went through the stats and he he was pretty good is is a little underrated i think um and, you know, maybe this is his chance. He goes to Atlanta and he can do what he's been doing and he'll 
he'll announce himself as the the quality reliever he is, but I I think you can hear the skepticism in our voice a little bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, right right now it's you know Marquez is so day <laughs> Martin and Flowers are back. We've got Will Smith and Darno in, and right now Josh Donaldson's gone, and I don't think he's coming back. So it's net net. I don't know. Thirty seven home runs. Um, 900 OPS for <clears throat> bringer of rain, Josh Donaldson last season. So yeah, he was pretty good for them. Good defense <clears throat> he, too. Second highest OPS plus on the team behind Freeman. They still have a lot of guys, but yeah, they're signing guys and picking up a lot of guys and not one of them has been splashy in, in the slightest. And I mean, maybe, maybe they're going to prove us wrong and maybe, Again, that's that's where it gets it gets interesting. I mean, if this is the tip of the iceberg for these two teams, they're about to have insane free agency. <laughs> but yeah, they um, also lost Keiko and they lost Teron, right? So they need starters. Is Teron gone? I knew Keiko was. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I don't know. There's still a lot of Mad Bum stuff, and it, it was funny. I I don't know. If I I. I put that ESPN article on. Maybe we'll talk about it at the end of the show a little bit. But, I mean, there there is a chance that the Chicago White Sox, Jose Abreu, and Yasmani Grandal, I mean, that could be one of the biggest free agent halls of the the offseason. Abreu and Grandal? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. that's pretty good. So far, I like what the White Sox have done more than the Braves, the two teams that have been active thus far. And so, let's see. Abreu and Grandal are making... What's uh? What are you always telling me? Eighteen plus sixteen is thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay. So then I'll I'll let you keep track of this. Will Smith, or we'll do it as a team. This is uh, a new math pod. I'm not positive so Will, on eighteen plus sixteen stuff. Will Smith is thirteen. Chris Martin is seven. So we got to twenty. That's, that's easy. That's an easy twenty. Darno twenty-eight. Tyler Flowers is making four. That's 32. Marcakis is four. That's 36. Darren O'Day is basically three. So that's 39. So for 39 mil, you could have what the Braves brought in. Or for 32 mil, you could have Grandal and Abreu. I mean, it, it, I'm leaning White Sox there, right? Yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's needs and stuff. Braves definitely don't need Abreu. But I mean the anti dearth of catching. I don't know. <laughs> the anti dearth. I think is. I think the official opposite of dearth is plethora. It's tough to say. <coughs> it is. But I think plethora and dearth. I think are going to be dearth. It's going to be a great word. Great. Bring it. Brought it back. What's the next thing we have on here to talk about? Um. Okay. <laughs> a little live producing. Um. Well, so another contract was given out. Do you want to do this, Mariners? Have, have, have you heard about this one, Jim? <clears throat> you put it on our sheet here, and I didn't. I clicked it, but I forgot to read it. But the Mariners give prospect Evan White $24 million six-year deal. He's in double A. Yeah, so he hasn't he hasn't played a lick of pro ball yet. Um, essentially, this is kind of the new thing the teams are doing. They want him to come in and be their starting first baseman next year. So they gave him the Scott Kingery contract. Um, I think it's literally almost exactly that. Six years, $24 million. So basically they bought out his team control and arbitration. Um, and they're going to give him a go. I, I think it's interesting. The Mariners do have this uh, a lot of young guys that are either going to prove themselves or not prove themselves in, the, um, in this coming season, essentially. They got Kellenic. Um, Justice Sheffield from our Yankees. Uh, who who are their other young guys? I was going through the list earlier. Kyle Lewis, Logan Gilbert, Justin Dunn. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the Mariners believe in him, and if he comes out and he plays, like, it's one of those cool stories. If he comes out and he looks bad, I mean, it's going to be a brutal look for the Mariners. Scott Kingery and Eloy Jimenez for the Phillies and the White Sox, respectively, both did this. They signed contracts before ever playing in the MLB, but they had played in AAA and been doing well there. This dude has never played in AAA. 
this is uh where I I want to make sure like people know I'm not trying to poo poo on this kid, 23 year old signing this deal. It's great for him, but why would you do this? I know that you want to be like nice and good faith and you, buying out arbitration is cool. And I get the buying out arbitration process when you have a proven guy who you don't want to go to war with every offseason. The Yankees did it with Severino, and I thought it was incredibly smart. The Braves did it with both Lacuna and Ozzy, right? Yeah, and got them for really good prices. So I, I, if you have a guy who's proven it in the big leagues, buy out his arbitration so you can stay friendly and not even have to worry about anything but just playing until he hits that free agency. I like I like that. Why would you do this, Jake? I I mean, hey, if he's legit and the Mariners clearly think he is, I mean, it could end up looking really good. I mean, look at the Pete Alonso stuff with the Mets this year. They didn't do the contract, but they they didn't horse around with him either. They just brought him up for opening day. They didn't mess with his service time, which by the way, the service time discussion is still going on with Chris Bryan and stuff uh and and potentially a couple other guys, but uh, I don't know if 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 he comes up and he plays good ball, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a win win. It's like the franchise did him good, and now he's doing the franchise good. But yeah, there's there's some liability if you're the Mariners, and I I don't know. I mean, I just read one scouting report on him that I think was from Passan from ESPN, and they're like, yeah, he's he's good with the glove, and it's like, okay, so did you just give six years, twenty four million to a, a a good defensive first baseman? Because are those in high demand? So I don't know. I, I think his numbers were good at double A. Um, uh, I mean, it, it's one of those catch 22s. If, if he comes in and he starts hitting and he looks really good, you're like, that's great. Great, great job by the Mariners showing their guy they believe in him, making him secure and letting him play good ball. If he plays badly, it's going to be like, what are the, why did the Mariners give him this money? They put too much pressure on the kid and he's garbage. Yeah, he actually has played some games at the AAA level. In 2018, he played four games. 2019, 100% of the time was in AAA, where he had an 838 OPS. Uh, no one cares about minor league numbers. I know yeah. I don't. Um, interesting. I hope it works out, but there's also a part of me on my shoulder that loves a good backfire, but... That backfire includes this kid not being a stud, and it's much more fun to see first-round picks become studs than fail. But it just seems, dude, the Mariners just, they just like doing shit. Their front office just, like, what can we do next is, I think, how their meetings go. Active. And they're like, let's trade someone. Nah, we did that a lot. Okay. We just got Nestor Cortez. We didn't really cover that transaction, but... <laughs> for uh, international signing bonus money. Yankees love that. Huge. They signed, they traded Nestor Cortez, who I believe was straight waived by the, no, they got picked up in the Rule 5 draft by the Orioles and then returned to the Yankees, right? I believe so, something like that. Crazy. So, I don't know. Good for Evan White. Weird for the Mariners. Do I wonder go, what the new CBA go- is going to do. Do we go commercial and then hit those last topics quick? Sure. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back for the last topics. Hey, Jake. Welcome back to the show. Dude, these last topics. What a tease. The last topics. Uh, Yeah. Actually, before we get into the last topics, Rich Hill's getting surgery. He's 40 years old. He's going to miss half the season. Update for the Dodgers. But... Did you hear the quote about the Dodgers? I put it in here because I thought it was funny. The Dodgers. Read it to me, Jim. I don't know if this is their quote, but uh, the Dodgers basically said that they're in on Garrett Cole, Strasburg, and Rendon. They are indeed considering them. However, the luxury tax will come into play, and they are going to be disciplined in in their pursuit. So Dodgers aren't in. Yeah, there's a couple moving parts here. Let's let's start with emotions. If the Dodgers signed Rendon, Cole, or Strasburg, would you kind of be like, what the fuck? Uh, I don't... Yeah, kind of. Like, No, I think it would make a little sense. Why not? Why wouldn't they sign Rendon? 
I mean, for me, it's just funny. I mean, like Josh Turner has been one of the more solid threats and and players on their team. I mean, you could shuffle guys around, but um, and then like the starting pitching, it's like you guys have had that. Now you're just gonna put more more gas on that fire, I guess. Um, I don't know. To the riches go the spoils. Well, they're I suppose, they're losing but... Ryu and Kershaw's go- getting old. Yeah. And now they lost Rich um, Hill. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I guess it, it would be cool. I guess you, if you're a Dodgers fan, you'd be stoked if you could go in and be like, hey, here's here's Cole. Uh, what what do you call him? Moxie Bueller? Yeah, he's full of Moxie. Walker Bueller? Moxie Bueller, um, whatever Rich Hill and Kershaw's arms are made out of these days. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. And then so getting into uh, what the what we know stuff, um, I, I guess they, you know, the luxury tax is in play here for the Dodgers. And they said they're like they have pr- they have the price that they're going to bid in those guys and, and they're not going to they're not going to go away from that. And I guess there was a good quote. I think it was from 2016. The Dodgers GM said something like, yeah, you know, if if you follow. If if you're if you're disciplined and you're approaching free agency, you're gonna finish third for every free agent. Um, so a lot of people were having fun with that quote. Who said that quote? I think they're GM. Oh wow, yeah, they're not in. They're like, hey, yeah, we'd love to have those guys, but we don't think they're gonna sign with us because we can't give them the money they want. But we'd love to have them. Andrew Friedman. Um, and okay, this is mean, Dodgers fans. Turn your ears off for a second. I mean, I'm half rooting for Garrett Cole to go to the Dodgers just so when they lose in the playoffs that literally everyone is staring at Dave Roberts and asking why he's still there. Oh, anti-Dave Roberts pod. I don't know why he's still the coach of the Dodgers. Yeah, doesn't make any decisions. Jake, did we we heard uh, a rumor, some hearsay. Rumor. Put this in your rumor bin. Put it in your rumor pipe and smoke it. That Rendon may actually be more interested in a short-term deal. We did hear a rumor about that. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. Because, like, he's, he's 30, 29. And we heard, like... I think he's 30. We heard, like, dude isn't going to want to play baseball until he's 37. Pay him till he's thirty five, and he'll he'll be happy to to walk away. Which I thought was, I mean, obviously this is just hearsay. It's a thought process, but I not one that I ever considered. We're talking about free agents. You always hear money well, and in it's, years. It, it's it's funny. I mean the the concept of it. You you wonder if free agency is going to start going that way, or, and if it does, what took baseball long to get there? But I mean, Jacoby Ellsbury, our friend we mentioned before. When that Ellsbury contract was signed, everyone knew it would end in disaster. You pay for the first three years of the contract. So with that in mind, why don't you just overpay guys for three years, get some good stuff out of them, and then they're off your books? Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if, if any teams walk away, especially with these three big-time free agents in the pool. Would you? What would you do if you were in a pool with... Garrett Cole, Strasburg, and Rendon. Paint that scene for us. Okay, so it's Garrett Cole, Strasburg, Rendon. Um, I think Cole is like a crazy competitor. I I think he's got stories like that. So I mean, we're we're doing some game where we're throwing a ball. Um, Rendon doesn't care at all, and he's beating both of us at it. And Steven Strasburg just has his feet in the pool, and he's not talking to us. Strasburg definitely just is sitting on the side with his feet in, with a shirt on, yes. like a hat, maybe some zinc oxide. That I was lockstep there. I have I have Rendon both elbows on the corner, holding himself up with headphones in, just chilling, and you and Cole being competitive. So I've got him in the same pose, but on a floaty. I think he doesn't want to put in the work of having his arms on the side of the pool. Okay. Maybe there's a seat where he's sitting. 
God, imagine. I've got Cole. I've now got have... Cole drowning you. Drowning me? But for fun. Like, let's see if I can drown you. And then you're escaping and stuff. I mean, they definitely, once they realize I'm not a strong swimmer, they each, like, have a little turn yeah. trying to drown me. And that's all right. Yeah. Okay. That's just, that's just guy. boys will be boys, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. All right, cool. Now that we've pictured that pool. Let's move on to this article that ESPN put out that has some good talking points and had some people that voted on stuff, which I don't really agree with some of these votes. Jake, how about that? Yeah, I, I know. Uh, and, and that's why normally I, I know you're you're fairly anti ESPN and I, I still end up there just because I'm brainless. But this this really was some good stuff. Did um, you say you're brainless? What did you what did you guys hear? I thought it was you uh, had a dearth of brains. I said maneless, like I don't have a lion's mane. That's for sure. That's one hundred percent. I mean, that's one thousand percent for sure. Sure. Um, let me. The first thing that jumped off for me, which I I think is always interesting, because um, you and I tend to be skeptical on these things until they happen. Um, but one of the questions was, of, of these three players, who's most likely to be on a new team next season? Mookie, Lindor, Chris Bryant. Zero votes for bets. <laughs> uh, and then they were pretty much split down the middle. There was eight Lindors and seven Bryants, which, A, makes me wonder, because the, the Mookie bets trade doesn't make sense. No one's going to pay the Red Sox any value for him, or the proper value. Yeah, but they brought in a new GM. To balance Heim the bugs, Heim. Um, so I, I, I think Mookie is level with these guys. So let let me ask you this: Do you think that one of these three guys will be traded this off season? Mm, the rational brain is saying no. Like Bryant, I have at you, zero. You like having three options on something, though. I've got Bryant as zero. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Why would they trade him? I think they're trying to shake it up, man. They shook it up with the manager. Like it's Bryant, enough shake, baby. He's good in the face. Who, uh, who fucking? And then Lindor. I don't know. Cleveland's a bunch did, of dumb. Did you just say he's good in the face? He's good and the face of that club, like. He is, I liked it better when you said he's good in the face. He is good in the face. He is good in the face. It's not wrong. Um, JD opting in for the Red Sox really put Bloom in a weird position. So I don't know. I would I would bet that neither of none none of the three get traded. Okay, I, I like that. I think Lindor. What a- I think everyone's going to be disappointed with the return for those guys. I I think that's the thing that of all those guys where you feel like there could be a proper issue, like Lindor, if, if he's going to leave your team and like, he's going to give you two years of seven war at shortstop. Like he, if, if the Indians are looking for that kind of return, they're not going to get it. Boston, same thing. Chris Bryant, I mean, he's good, and he had like a he had a really good year last year, but he's also had some lesser years. Like I, I, I don't know. I guess I would I would circle Bryant amongst that mix, being like they they could move him. All right. What was the next question you liked from this article? What was the next question I liked? Um, let's see what we can hit qu- quick. Rendon, um, pretty much everyone said Nationals. There was one Rangers, one Cardinals. That's kind of fun. I like the Rangers. I don't know if it makes sense, but I just like the idea of him going back to Texas. New ballpark, chilling, and then retiring. I mean, such a chiller. Um, and then tied to that was who's more likely to return to the Nats, Rendon or Strasburg? Rendon won in kind of a landslide. Um. Yeah, I mean, Strasburg already has his offer from the Nats, and he's shopping around. So they like the Nats kind of set their point. Now every other team can go beat it, and then the Nats can see if they want to. But at that point, they're probably they're already probably so deep into their plans moving on from Strasburg 
that when the opportunity is like, hey, maybe we can still get them. They're like, well, we've done a lot of work on the the next phase already. Let's just keep moving forward. Keep it moving. Um, I think they just turned on the heat in this house and I'm like getting cooked right now. Love that. Um, the the one time I wear sleeves. What an idiot. Um, and then, uh, Jim, I, th- I think the one question that really stood out to me and is, <laughs> is a fun one because these were asked to GMs, I believe, it, or 15 team executives. Well, that um, means nothing. And they, yeah, that means nothing. Um, but it was, uh, who is the player most likely to be overpaid on a big contract? Four said Wheeler, two said Grandal, one said Castellanos, one said Daniel Hudson, <laughs> seven declined to answer. <laughs> Why? Okay, so half the anonymous people declined the answer. Cool. What? Yeah. Why would you do dude that line in it see this is why I hate articles sometimes. Yeah. We asked executives. Okay. We asked the guy who's in charge of uh food. Yeah. Retail sales. Yeah. What do you mean? Just fucking executives. And then they refuse to answer. I can't answer that. Well, you know this is an anonymous survey and your name's not attached, nor your position. No, no, I cannot answer that question hey i'm just sorry i wish i could help you out here but hands are tied who is the one player most likely to be overpaid on a big contract this winter the answer's cole but i guess people don't like Ooh. that answer Ooh, i love it jimmer i mean cole is going to be overpaid there's no way you're paying for this last season and there is zero chance he repeats his 2019 season seven years in a row. He's had two really good seasons. Okay, there's no chance he repeats those two seven times in a row, (laughs) but that's what you have to pay for. So Cole's going to be the most overpaid. Yeah. That's the nature of the beast. Yeah, I think there's an argument out there for Wheeler. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Daniel Hudson, if he gets, like, real money, then him, too. Like, I like Hudson. He's got an awesome story, but he's never had sustained success. Yeah. So if he gets, you know what I mean? He's never done the full season as someone's closer, but someone's going to give him money to try it, and then you have to if, figure out what if that's If someone like. pays Daniel Hudson closer money, yeah. Yeah, that's an easy one, right? Yeah, that's not bad. Well, there you go. I'm better than your random anonymous executives. Look at that. Boom. And I put my name to it. I didn't decline to answer. Yeah, we'll answer anything. Yeah, I just did an AMA. Ask me anything. I answered a lot of questions. Jake, I have a fun game to end the show here for you. Okay, hit me with it. It's really fun. Play play that fun game noise. Yeah, I need to go get the fun game noise because uh, it's like, it's going to be a doozy. Here we go. I have up on my screen. I hope this isn't mean. If you did this to me, it'd be so mean. Okay. I have up on my screen from um, the MLB website, the Miami Marlins depth chart as of right now. Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't have named one of the 12 like there, I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I would have named one starting pitcher, and that's all. I wouldn't have named a single position player. So there's no pressure. Wow, man. Do you? So ha- it's their current. So like Starlin Castro's not there. He's not here. No. Do they have? Do they have? Uh, what's his name? Isan Diaz. Isan Diaz. He's the sec- starting second baseman on their depth chart. Okay. Do they have Garrett Cooper as a starting first baseman? No, they have him backing up someone at first base. Damn. Uh, let's see. It's He's also Real the... Mudo behind the dish. <laughs> no, Cooper is also the third string right fielder. No. So you got Diaz at second base. That's impressive. In the outfield, it's Yelich, Ozuna, and Giancarlo. <laughs> nope. It is uh, Ramirez. Brian Anderson, the third baseman. Yeah, you got that guy. 
Um, their right damn. fielder is Harold Ramirez. I uh, love watching him do what he does. Center fielder is 29 year old, five foot ten John Birdie. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, from Bowling Green State, nicknamed the Birdman. And in left field, they have 26 year old uh, Austin Dean. Deaner. Around the horn at shortstop. They got uh, Miguel Rojas. Miggy Rojas, yeah. He's kind of cool. I did a breakdown of him. And then behind the dish, they have, uh, let's see what his first name is, Jorge Alfaro, 26 years old. Dude, none of these guys are even Alfaro. young. Alfaro, yeah. It's just funny that none of them are young. That's tough, man. Um God. Their starting rotation. Who do do they have starting at first over Cooper? Dean. They have Dean as the starting first baseman and the starting left fielder. So You're telling me they have (laughs) Dean at two positions. Yeah. The the, the MLB depth chart does, yeah. So Cooper, you got. We'll give you credit for Cooper. Thank you. So their starting rotation is Pablo Lopez, 23 years old. Yep. Sandy Alcantara, 24 years old. He had a good year. Did he? Yeah, 388. 32 starts, 388, yeah. Caleb Smith, 28-year-old. Our guy. Jordan Yamamoto. My dude. And Robert Duggar. Duggar, huh? <laughs> yeah, Duggar. So that's the Miami Marlins professional baseball team. And that's tough. That's a real tough breed. It's a tough segment, man. (laughs) We'll come back to it in two weeks and still not be able to name anyone. Maybe maybe they'll make some big signings. Do you want to feel good about yourself? Do you want to do like the Diamondbacks? Ah, I'm not feeling good about. It. I'm I'm getting cooked right now, dude. And everyone's standing outside. Like I think I think this is starting to be like a prank. They're trying to smoke you out. I think I'm getting smoked out right now. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for listening. That endeth the show today. Hopefully, we get back to normal soon. Get back to our home places, uh, and get back to our schedule. We do have Thanksgiving coming up in a couple days, so we wish you guys. The best of your Thanksgivings. Jake, what are you thankful for before we leave this episode forever? I'm thankful for knowing that there's actually Marlins fans in the world. Like, there's a couple people out there who are like, yeah, I love the Marlins. They're just bad. Like, I- there's... there's- there's there's a there's a group chat out there going right now that someone's like, hey, you think Alfaro is going to have a, a better year next year? Do you really think Dean's going to play both positions? <laughs> you think you think I know Deaner's athletic, but you know what they call Miami Marlins fans right now? What do they call them, Jim? The Orlando Dreamers. Ooh, and that's what I'm Full thankful circle. for. I am thankful for the Orlando Orlando Dreamers and the pitch. That got presented to us. I think it, it was a great gift. Laughter is one of the best things you can offer someone else in this life. And the Orlando Dreamers gave it to us in spades. So I thank them kindly. Go Dreamers, baby. Go Dreamers. We will see you when we see you next. Thanks for listening. <laughs>